I'm Tabby. And I'm Caitlin. And today we will be discussing The Maddest Obsession, which is the second installment in the Maid series by Danielle Laurie. And this is one of my favorites. There's only three, so you have to kind of pick and choose. But Mm -hmm. I am obsessed with the characters in this book. We'll just start off with reading the back of the book. We don't have the physical book, so we are looking at Goodreads again. And I was very interested to see the rating on Goodreads. Like, it got a little bit higher than I thought it would. So it had a 4.31 out of 5 stars. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, like, pretty good. Yeah, it had 90,000 ratings. Dang. So you know what's a good one. Yeah, I love that. So back in the book. She fears the dark. He rules it. Her dresses are too tight. Her heels too tall. She laughs too loudly, eats without decorum, and mixes up most sayings in the book. Little do most know it's just a sparkly disguise, there to hide one panic attack at a time. Nobody can crack Gianna's facade. No one, anyway, until he comes along. Most see a paragon of morality, a special agent upholding the law. In the New York underworld, others know him as a hustler, a killer. His nature is cold as the heart of ice in his chest. Christian Alistair has always followed the life plan he'd envisioned in his youth beneath the harsh light of a frigid damp cell. With a proclivity for order in the number three, he's never been tempted to veer off course, but perhaps one should never say never. One winter night and their lives intertwine. She hates him, his stone-cold demeanor, his arrogance and too perceptive eye. But over the years, even as their games consist of insulting each other's looks and intelligence, she begins to live to play with him. Nowhere in Christian's plan had he ever prepared for Gianna. She's chaos embodied, not his type, and married. But none of that can stop his eyes from following her wherever she goes. All along, she doesn't even know that she's his, his frustration, his fascination, his maddest obsession. She used a lot of big words. <laughs> She's like, I just want you to know that I'm really good at that writing. I know I a lot of words. Stellar vocab. I know. Like, she's thrown out some words that I have not had to read out loud in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll just kind of get started with how we feel about the book. Like, what would you personally rate this one? I'm going to give it like a 4.75, 7.6. Yeah, that's pretty solid. I agree. I mean, for me, it's, I, it's honestly, good. yeah, I would say like 4.5 because there were a couple things that like weren't my favorite, but yeah, I yeah. really like this book is good. And yeah, there are a couple things I didn't love, but I like yeah. overall, like it was a solid story. Agreed. And like the great thing about these books is like, while they do all intertwine with each other and I definitely recommend reading all three. You could just read this book as a standalone if you wanted, and you would be satisfied. Yeah, because it's like, honestly, you get all the backstory in the world that you could ever possibly need. I mean, Nico's in it, but he doesn't play a big role. I feel like that part, like with Nico and Elena, like, I mean, that might be confusing, but not really. Like, they're just side characters. Yeah, you would understand, like, oh, they got married, and here's kind of what their personalities and roles are. I think it's more just like Nico and Christian's interactions that you like kind of need some background information on. Mm -hmm. Um, But other than that, yeah, it can definitely be a standalone. But even in the first book, it didn't give a whole lot of context for why there was like animosity, you know? Like, I just want to know how they met. (laughs) Yeah, same. Like, I know he just kind of wormed his way into the hearts of the mafia because of his past histories. I think he kind of showed up and he was like, you need me. And they were like, okay. Like, yeah, kind of. We could use you. I think it's solely because Antonio just like kind of clung to powerful people. I think. And like Christian was so young that he's like, I can get him under my thumb. And Christian's like, you're actually dumb. He probably did think that. I'll play along. (laughs) Yeah. He was like, I can totally like have this guy with his like talents and get him to do whatever I want and Christian was like like I'm just here to steal your girl you thought (laughs) exactly (laughs) definitely good book I loved most of the characters in this story there's a lot of like really small side characters that we probably won't touch on too much but the two main ones obviously are going to be Christian and Gianna so with Christian like I'm obsessed with him like he's obsessed with Gianna Mm-hmm. I love him. He yeah. does have some flaws, and we'll talk about those later. <laughs> yes, but <quite> a few. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> he's giving like in the best way possible because I know American Psycho like 
Christian Bale's character is slightly unhinged and he's not a good guy but that's like the vibe that I get from Christian yeah like he presents himself as a really polished like put together guy but he's fucking wild yeah that man is nuts he Mm. is so crazy agreed and um I agree with what you've put here like I might be toxic because I'm obsessed with this man same and it's like again you like to think that if you met this man in real life, like you could be like, Walk no, away. there's a bunch of red flags. Like, I don't think I, I could. Not, I should not mess with this, but like, I don't know. No, if he He's gave hot. me even a sliver, an ounce of his attention, I would cling on to that so I would hard. Too. I would too. And like, I know he's a germ freak. I know he's a germ freak. But listen. I'm listening. If this man spit on me, I mm-hmm. would say thank you. I would. I would be like, do it again. Please. Please and thank you. Because I'm ah. very polite. Wow. Um, yeah. So amazing like personality um development <laughs> between like from the beginning of the book yeah. to when he kind of like starts to fall for Gianna, like he's vulnerable. so broken. He is, and we should we should talk about that, like kind of oh, we will. Trail of um, mental illness. Um, but yeah, so like I freaking love it whenever like men in books like put up this wall and they're like, I don't have like any desire for like intimacy, um, but then like they're a softie for this one particular person. I would I go feral, absolutely feral for this type of thing where it's like you have the guy and he's like, yeah, I've actually never kissed a woman in my life. And it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. I want you to do nothing but do that this entire book. Like, yeah, same. I'm building up to this kiss, baby. It's the most innocent thing you could do as far as like physical intimacy. But it's so freaking like dirty in that instance i will say i mean the reasoning behind it is very sad and obviously very traumatic with like what happened to him like in prison and stuff and that's why he won't Mm -hmm. um but still like i was just like yes like he hasn't kissed anybody but her that is special that is special it's so hot (laughs) (laughs) oh he's so hot and so broken (laughs) <laughs> yeah and speaking of his backstory like oh my god it's horrible so their mom was a total piece of shit and uh, like of course we've expected that you've read the book at this point and like I'm glad that they left her to die yeah like, she deserved it she deserves to rot in hell she deserved um, way more than that she ruined her children and luckily I guess maybe his brother is like slightly less damaged because Christian like protected him, but he's not well. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, that is vile. Like what Christian had to go through and like, yeah. And then on top of that, like when he's in prison, like, uh, I don't know, like they had to go through so much, (laughs) but anyway, all of his experiences as a child, obviously like really shaped him. And like we said, we'll talk a little bit more about his mental illnesses and his tics here in a minute. Cause I think it, it was really cool how she portrayed that. However, mm-hmm. like I wish she had dived a little bit deeper into kind of what he was feeling with it. Um, a little more of his perspective. Yeah. Nice. But also what we didn't mention is that he's a double agent. Yeah. That's the shit. He's so freaking mysterious and, like, badass. Like, when she woke up and, like, could hear him talking Russian, like, she's like, am I stroking out? No, no, he's actually talking in a different language. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, like, you just got a million times cooler. I'm a sucker for that. I love how we slowly start, like, unraveling, like, who Christian is. Because, like we said before, like, he's very polished. He's very put together. But the more time we spend with Gianna, first of all, I think she kind of starts to rub off on him a little bit. And he's like, mm-hmm. why is this happening? Like, this insane woman has ruined me but like we see that he's not you know kind of who he is like he is a russian uh, mafia member like he's got fucking prison tats everywhere he's like i don't know he's just freaking cool yeah he really is and i think like one of the first things that stood out about like 
the vibes he puts off is like at the very beginning of the book when Gianna is like being pulled out of the jail cell by him. Um, she's like, she's expecting like some dirty fed to come like bail her out. But he's like so by the book. Yeah, she was expecting some like ugly ass man with an ill-fitting suit and she's intimidated by him and he's like super polished he's hot he's got like a super like great fitting suit and looks well dressed and she said also that he looked her in the eye and it made her like so uncomfortable because men he's like piercing blue eyes (laughs) (laughs) and so it's just like it makes you just kind of like realize that this man is like he's scary yeah well and i think that too says a lot about like the type of men that she has to spend time with Mm -hmm. because like she's obviously not treated with respect she's married to a made man they don't care about women all that much but like they're just a different breed than what christian alistair is yeah because they care like they care about their appearance but she knows in her life care about women in the way that they care about possessions yeah owning something Um, and like don't get it wrong like Kristen wants to own her but he doesn't want to like change her yeah for sure and everyone else like kind of punishes her for her behavior so she's not like because she's crazy yeah she is so fun speaking of Gianna yeah let's talk about Gianna (laughs) um I fucking love her she is my favorite character in this entire trilogy because she makes she she does make a reappearance in all books yes she does and i i love that she is like the common thread through all of them she's so fucking hilarious she's so real like her inner monologue gives me life same that's what's so refreshing i think about gianna is that she is extremely self-aware um and i think that's another thing too that i get really frustrated with with like main characters is that often like there is like this big miscommunication or like Mm -hmm. they really firmly believe like what they're doing is like the right thing and i feel like multiple times throughout the book gianna tried to think critically about like different things and like see stuff from Christian's perspective especially when she started realizing a little bit more about like his backstory and then like she could notice like his tics and stuff and like I really like that because oftentimes like I don't know I just feel like with female main characters they can be so like one-minded they can be portrayed as kind of like ditzy I know Gianna like kind of puts up this front to a lot of people. She kind of like portrays herself as someone who isn't as intelligent as she truly is. But she does that on purpose. Yeah, but she does it so she doesn't get challenged and targeted, basically. Um, she wants to not be seen as a threat. And But that's I why just- Christian's so drawn to her too. Cause I mean he definitely thought she was dumb, but like the second he could see her like kind of scheming like in her eyes, he's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, I oh I love that too because she's like whenever she's mentioning that like the men in her life never look her in the eye, she's like, it's best that way if I can just show them my thighs and make them look there because then they can't see what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. And Christian's like, Nope, I'm going to stare into your soul. Uh it's just I don't know, that whole like prologue was just so so freaking important because like the building mm-hmm. of like Gianna's character. Like, I love to see, like, how she not only, like, matured, but just, like, how she learned how to play the game better throughout the whole book. She's so powerful, honestly. Like, Uh, what a queen. (laughs) And then, obviously, she's married to a piece of shit. Like, she was young. She was very (laughs) naive. She thought, you know, being married to the most powerful made man was going to open up a lot of doors for her, which... I'm sure it did in some aspects, but it was definitely not all it was cracked up to be. And she learned that real fast. And so I feel like she just had to grow up so quickly, kind of like Christian did. They both were, you know, children who were forced into these terrible situations. And like, it was like a sink or swim type thing. And they, they swam, but they are definitely dealing with a lot of stuff because of it. Like she has her panic attacks. Christian has like his OCD stuff. (laughs) And she kind of felt like she had no choice, too, because she had to... See, the daughter stay with her family. Yeah, she had to get away from, like, her father. And so she was like, well, I guess maybe this will be better. And it just turns out it wasn't. Um, (laughs) Psych! (laughs) But, like, at the same time, 
it's kind of like she had to try, you know, like she had to try to change her circumstances. So I mean, it definitely set off a chain reaction that worked out and got her to where she needed to be. But I mean, those were some tough learning experiences. Yeah, because so the guy that she marries at first is Nico's dad, Antonio. He is a piece of shit, uh, horrible, abusive dick. And also gross, gross old man, gross, gross old man. And then but like, he's probably hot, though. Her best friend, like, also fucking sucks. Anyway, we'll talk a little bit more yeah. about them in a minute. Rip in peace, you know. After he does die, like, she really does have, like, this already. She has, like, this big spurt of growth. She's trying her best to, like, sort out what she can do. Um, and so she's like, you know what? You know what I should do is just marry some old fart who... <laughs> doesn't have it in him to hit me <laughs> because that was where Nico went wrong. And Nico and Gianna's relationship is so different than the Nico that we know in mm-hmm. the first book. Like we only see kind of like that softer side of him with Elena. And like, they always talk about how he is like this piece of shit Don. And mm-hmm. you see that in this book, he is yeah. a piece of shit to Gianna. Yeah, they have a history. Cool. They slept together while she's married to Antonio. Mm -hmm. And I think you always kind of resented her for that. Gianna acts out because she can and because, like, that's what's expected from her. And Nico doesn't understand. I don't think that she's doing that on purpose. Like, he just thinks she's obnoxious and annoying. Um, But he does love her. I mean, that's still family to him. Um, And so I do love that he, like, gave her the choice to pick who she wants to marry because that gave her the option to be like, bet like yeah you're gonna regret this and then it's amazing too because probably (laughs) nico that was the last thing he expected but it should have been like exactly what he expected if he really was paying attention to kind (laughs) of like play the game (laughs) yeah like she's like okay so i'ma just marry anybody that's gonna die and it'll be cool yeah this Um, dude can't even get it up to like (laughs) <laughs> do it on our wedding night this is ideal he's felt he fell asleep at 6 30 yeah she's like i i could not be happier truly and also just like again her inner monologue is hilarious she literally only gets funnier as she gets older and wiser but it is kind of sad because it's kind of like a series of unfortunate events uh <laughs> up until like she finally like finds happiness with christian she's, she's only it funny because she's traumatized <laughs> yeah in terms of how her situation could have gone, like, honestly, I feel like when Antonia and her best friend died, like, it, I think she was sad partially because that's scary. Like, the club got shot up and, like, she could have also died. Yeah. But I bet that was also kind of a big relief because it's yeah. like two birds with one stone. Let's fucking go. Honestly, she probably did have, like, some mixed emotions. But I think, yeah, ultimately the emotion that prevailed was just, like, relief relief yeah i agree and then like her <clears throat> sugar daddy her old ass hugh hefner oh he's a king, king. honestly you know like i, th- I can't say like, anything bad about him yeah he just kind of like let her be he was like sweet i got a hot wife okay love he's that like, for this me. is yeah ideal and uh, you can have this apartment i am not going to visit you here's a credit card and she was like this is honestly the best case scenario yeah and uh, like he gets out of it he gets like this like symbol of status and power because he's like i've got this beautiful woman that is mine and it just kind of like is like a a little bit of like a flex in that type of um, yeah. environment so like he's like yeah that's right that's my wife my wife my wife <laughs> And it's like, yeah, none of you people who can get it up can have her because that's my wife. And, you know, she she was true to him. She not one single time slept with yeah. another man. Yeah, honestly. What, Good for her. What a virtuous queen. Um, do his <laughs> sons suck? Yeah, his sons, they were bad. They were bad people. They did her yeah. so dirty. But while he was alive, he treated her well. And we have nothing but respect for that. Yeah, nothing but respect for my my man, Hugh. Um, That's not really his name. (laughs) I'm not sure what his name is. I can't remember. (laughs) I can't either. Um, But then just a little bit more about Antonio. Um, He literally, like, sucks so bad. So he was, like, having an affair with her skank-ass best friend. Um, 
And she was like, Gianna, I love him. Which I I felt so fucking betrayed. So betrayed because she was like, wow, I get to go to these college classes. Like, I have made my first, like, true friend. It wasn't somebody who was, like, thrust upon me in, like, this circle of made men. And then she's like, ooh, actually, I would love to have the life that you have. Thank you. And it's actually so ridiculous to me because... Gianna told her how much it sucked. Yeah, obviously, you know all the ins and outs if you're if you're becoming friends with Gianna. She's told you, like, my piece of shit husband, blah, 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 this horrible life. She's and like, that's she's my like, man. No, I want that. I'm going to take that from you. Thank you. Thank and then you. they immediately die. <laughs> and that's that's just <clears throat> justice. Yeah. It's justice. It I really have is. no remorse. He's, he's so gross. And, like, he was proud that he had, like, a child bride, like, yeah, he's gross. Yeah, he's no. like, wow, look at my hot 19-year-old wife. You have, like, like a 22-year-old son. Yeah, he's, like, 50. I don't know how old he is. He's disgusting. He's old. Um, yeah, so he's well, gross. And also, just, like, whenever they're at that charity event, and, like, he's, like, getting all up in her shit, and she, like, goes outside, and she's talking to Christian, and Christian leaves, and he, like fucking hits her yeah and i was like ew like in public and everyone's just like oh glad antonio yeah because like nobody's gonna challenge him he's the don like if he wants to hit his wife he's gonna hit his wife and you're gonna shut the fuck up about it yeah uh, he's just gross like, yeah. at least nico never hit elena, elena yeah yeah i'm gonna say elena try to stop me elena. Um, <laughs> speaking of them they are fun in this book. Well, I mean, Nico's an asshole. But yeah, they're Nico's together. Like, in they're the cute. Present. They're cute. <laughs> yeah, because when Nico was an asshole, that was in the past. Not that it excuses it, but it was. Yes, but longer. also no. Because you know how, like, last time, like, when we did The Sweetest Oblivion, I was like, I feel like Elena basically went from, like, one controlling man to another. Yeah. Uh, we we got to see a little bit of that in this book because, like, yeah. Elena went over and, like, to Gianna's apartment and Gianna was, like, teaching her how to cook and stuff and her phone died. And Nico, like, breaks Gianna's door down and was like, why were you not answering me? And she's like, I'm sorry, I didn't check my phone. He was like, we talked about this. And I was like, whoa, slow yeah. your roll there. I remember we kind of talked about, like, would you fall for Nico? And, like, I just The answer is still yes. It's hard because, like, he kind of turned the charm on until they were actually together. So it's, like, I think the real question is, would you continue to be in love with Nico once you were married to him? But also, if you remember, like, Elena, like, needs that, though. Like, she tried to, like, see the other side of the story, and she was like, no, 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 no. this is definitely where I belong. Like, yeah. I, I need to be in this lifestyle. So maybe she likes it. I don't know. Maybe. It just I guess seems, like, kind of gross. It is gross. It really is, like, in real life. But, like, I guess pop off if they're happy. The cute part is that, you know, like, Gianna was kind of acting like a big sister to Elena in this book. Yeah teaching her how to cook so that she could be like a a more you know traditional mafia wife because you know what we didn't talk about in the sweetest oblivion nico's fucking uh housekeeper oh my god housekeeper we forgot to talk about that whole scene so he had a housekeeper that he would only bang on tuesdays when she would come and drop off meals and like Elena freaking got into it with her and then had her fired. And she's like, fuck, now I got to learn how to cook. (laughs) Yeah, because, well, obviously this was before, like, he was true to Elena. It's not like he wasn't still banging her while they got, like, married. But the housekeeper was, like, expecting it to continue. So Elena was like, get the fuck out of my house. But then she was like, "Uh uh-oh. She's like, hi, my name's Elena Russo. Get out of my home. My name's Elena. I'm 19 and I never learned how to fucking cook. So, <laughs> um, I love them though. Hope they're doing well. Yeah, but that part was cute. Like, until he broke down the door. <laughs> yeah, until he busted down the door and was like, Am I hey. chancing your phone? Which I'm sure he's also just like scared she could like dip at any point in time because she's done it before. Like, he's just saying she won't do it again. <laughs> he also is probably like a little bit afraid, like, for her safety because she would kind of be a target. I mean, she's the Don's wife. I could. She was also target. pregnant, wasn't she? At this point in the book, I think she was. Yeah. But I'm not positive. I can't really remember. She is pregnant in the book. 
Yeah, so it must be at this point. At some point. Because <laughs> this is like the um like where it lines up with the timeline of sweetest oblivion. This is after they're married for real for real. Like this is mm-hmm. after they have like their church wedding. Yeah. It like follows like the end. So it's a little them. yeah. So that so makes sense. She probably is pregnant right then. So yeah. he's probably like super overprotective of her. Oh yeah. But again, she probably likes it for all we know (laughs) yeah who knows but yeah that's pretty much like all the major characters like gianna has like a couple friends in the book like val val's a queen i like her except she's kind of the worst she's very enabling and i don't like that yeah but it's slim pickings i'm sure yeah no kidding and then you have that one dude who like proposed to gianna on a boat and she was like absolutely not and he's like that's fine i have someone as a backup she's like congratulations she has the worst friends she has the worst group of people surrounding her and she's just trying to do her best they do nothing but bring her down (laughs) you're like oh you're sober like are you sure you don't want to just do a bump real quick in the bathroom oh she's like yeah "Yeah, i'm like so sure thank you She's like, I am honestly traumatized from having an addiction. Thank you. Terrible. Um, Some things that we really (laughs) liked about this book. There are a lot of great things that happen in this book. One of my favorites is just the way that Christian shows his care for Gianna. Because, Mm -hmm. like, he doesn't say he loves her for the longest time. Um, But he shows his love, and I love that for her. Acts but, of service. Yeah. he His love language is acts of service and also physical touch. Every time he would, like, wash her hair and, like, brush it for her. Like, the aftercare part mm-hmm. of, like, their sex. I thought that was so cute. And I think it's really funny how he, like, made it into a routine. Yeah. Like, he would come over at a certain time. They would have sex, and he's like, let me wash your hair. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of that is his OCD manifesting. Yeah, and I was like, oh, he's making, like, routines. Yeah, but at the same time, it probably became, and I mean, it did become, like, comforting. It became an issue, too, though, But he's trying to, like, domesticate her. Yeah, she was concerned at the same time because she was like, wait, 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 what's happening here? (laughs) But also, like, even when he's, like, being a dick to her, like, he's still, he's very open to her as well. So, like, he never tells her his deep, dark secrets, but she still, like, trusts him deeply. And so, like, they fought, but, like, whenever the power went out, he was there for her, like, to comfort her. And, like, he knew exactly what she needed. And so, like, they have such a strange relationship, but, like, he's never not going to love her. Right. And so much of what they, like, how they communicate is, like, unspoken. Like, Mm -hmm. it's crazy. They just, like, they they just know what they need. Yeah. Also, okay, we kind of talked about this, but we really loved, like, the prequel because we got the the whole backstory of Christian's, like, life and then Gianna's life. And just, like, having that information is so it's critical. important. Yeah, because, like, then you see them, like, in the present tense part of the book and, like, you're like, okay, so they're fucked up for this reason, this reason, this reason. Like, makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, and so you can kind of, like, understand, like, what they're thinking, even if it doesn't explicitly say it. Yeah, Um, because it's like, we don't, like I said, Christian is not an open book by any means, but Gianna is, and so she's very willing to talk about her problems, and I think part of that is because she was, like, actively going to therapy, and that was, like, a good way for her to cope, Um, but with Christian, like, we only know what he says, like, in his head, And so I think that was really cool, too, to see, like, how his interactions worked with Gianna based off of the information we know from him. But, like, her trying to piece it together, too, as they go is also very interesting. I agree. And I think that's what made this book so, like, compelling. Because I remember the first time I read it, like, I could not put it down. Mm -mm. Because it just kind of kept peeling the layers back a little bit at a time. And you just never you were never not excited to like keep reading. Like there's so many levels to both characters. Uh, Also my absolute favorite part of this entire book is in the the prequel portion when Christian and Gianna are like kind of getting together for the first time. They don't sleep with each other, but she fucking forgets his name. (laughs) And he's basically like, yes, I'm my name. She's like, uh. (laughs) She's like hot 
fed? I don't know. Like, who That's are you again? He was so <laughs> embarrassed. And, like, I don't think, like, anyone really ruffles him often. But, like, he got humbled quick. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised, like, that didn't just, like, end the book right there, honestly. Like, he was like, oh, my God. But I think that's what made him, like, so obsessed with her was because he was like, <laughs> am I nothing to you? And I, <laughs> yeah. like, you are everything to me. And he was like, I don't think I can deal with that. But when he sees her again, he's like, no, I'm going to make you remember me. Yeah, it's like a like a challenge a little bit. Oh, my God. I was super healthy. Racking but... up that entire time. It is hilarious. Also, when... The convenience store that Jian has in <laughs> actively getting robbed. And so she's like, uh, uh, well, I have to do something productive. So she just starts painting her nails. And I'm like, imagine. Yeah, girl. Like, fucking imagine. Like, that just proves like, that I've been one, here before. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, two, she's just, like, so fucking traumatized that nothing phases her. Well, and you know what's so funny about that scene, too, is that it's right after, like, the terrible family dinner with Elena's family when Nico shoots one of um, uh, his own men. The cousins. One yes. Of his cousins. And she's just like, Jesus Christ, like, what is this day? And then yeah. on top of that, like, they finally get to leave the convenience store. And then Christian Alistair is standing right there with the rest of, like, the feds. And she was like, are you joking? Like, yeah, she's like, can I catch a goddamn break? Like, can I honestly? just go home? Like, it's just like a Friday evening. She's trying to relax, put her feet up, watch her favorite shows. <laughs> and this is her Friday. Uh, yeah, that was amazing. I also really liked um, that Christian was, like, seeking help. In the first part of the book, when he's talking to his therapist, this is after he has left her for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was at his new job, and he got into, like, an altercation, and he was like, yes, I actually do need to continue seeking help, because they made him go see a therapist, because, like, you cannot come back unless you go see a therapist. Right. And so he did, but then he just keeps going, because he was like, oh god like I hate to admit it but this actually is helping me just a little bit just like talking it out with somebody (laughs) Um, it's funny how that actually works like but like all through the book like he you can see brief snippets of like the conversation he has with this therapist um and then he ends up leaving and they reconcile and then the very end of the book is him still going to see this therapist and like still talking stuff out there and so I really do feel like that had a big role in like his character development as well because I feel like the therapy was helping him be able to be like a little more open with Gianna. Oh, for sure. And again, it just kind of shows that he's literally only a softie for her. Also, it was just like nice to be able to see like (laughs) the reasons for Nico's reputation. And you really got to see why everyone was like, Nico fucking sucks. Like he's an asshole Mm -hmm. and a tyrant. So but we also get to see his relationship with Christian, which is what I was most interested in throughout the whole last book, because it was so obvious that they had some beef. Like yeah. they were only partners because it was beneficial to both of them. And like he does use Christian's like skills and stuff, like whenever Elena goes missing and whatever. But like every time they'd see each other, I just love that one of them gets like punched in the face. <laughs> I know they like they hate each other so much and it's so funny he but, like punches like, Nico he's like tell me how you made her marry you he's like well I didn't ask I yeah, just showed I literally up. forced her <laughs> uh, d- have you tried kidnapping her or or no forced proximity oh you're doing that I don't know man <laughs> he was like I don't know it worked for me except Nico literally put Elena in the same like building like in the same like house so maybe that's where Christian fucked up. He needed to put her in his own apartment. Nico did that for him, though, because Gianna was like, I need a place to stay. And he's like, say less. I know exactly where yeah. you can live. And it is right across the street <laughs> from yeah. this man. It's amazing. Right across the hall. <laughs> that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. And then, honestly, most of the stuff in this book, like, is 10 out of 10. There were a couple things that we disliked. But, like, it's not a huge list. So, if you've been listening to some of our other episodes, you know that neither of us like the pregnancy trope. So, part of the things, like, of the lists of things that we disliked is, like, okay, I know their relationship is obviously toxic as fuck. But what makes it worse is that they got back together only because she was pregnant. 
And they were literally not even like fixing the issues that existed in the first place. They were just like, well, obviously we have to be together now because you're pregnant. And I do think they would have resolved it anyway. I just felt like the pregnancy was like the driving factor here. Yeah. And it's like, cause Christian had already come to terms with like, yes, I do want to be with her, but I'm going to have to like make it up to her somehow. But yeah. Gianna should have made him work for it. Instead. She's just like, yeah, you're fucking stuck with me, buddy. Cause like I am pregnant with your child. Yeah. And honestly, that's kind of fair because she probably was scared, but Yeah. I it's like you forgave him too fast. I, I hate when people do that in real life. I hate when it happens in books. Like, a baby is not going to solve your problems. It's only Which it was not planned, yeah. Like, yeah. Which I thought was funny, too. It's like, dang, the consequences of your own actions. Yeah, because they literally, like, don't use protection. <laughs> um, yeah. Silly gooses. Um, there were also a lot of times when Christian was just, like, exceptionally clingy. Like, he was a lot. And I felt, like, suffocated for Gianna. Especially, like, the parts where, like, he would consistently come over every single day at this time. And he'd make dinner and he'd do this. And, like, Gianna was like, what is happening? Like, I yeah. feel like I have not, like, left my home. And it's also to the point where it's like, if you're like two minutes late, I'm like freaking out. And she's like, I am not this type of person. Like, what are you doing to me? And I get that. Like, she just realized one day, like, oh, I'm relying on this man now. And that is something I never wanted to do again. And Christian's like, too bad, because that's what I want you to do. Again, it just kind of speaks to their dynamic not being super healthy. But um, I feel like they're both working on it. They're both trying their best, but they just obviously aren't in the healthiest of places. And so you can't really have a super healthy dynamic at that point. So another thing that we disliked is like Gianna and her mom were supposed to be like really close. And also I know that there's not a whole lot her mom could have done, but her mom like kind of encouraged her marrying Antonio when she was 19. And she's she like, this really is good. Stepped in to defend her from like her father. And so it's just like, I know that like what she could do is kind of limited, but it's like she didn't even try to stand up for her daughter. But also it's like her father was like probably abusing her mom too. I don't know. It's like such a fucked up situation because like I know her mom left her and like she loved her mom dearly. But it's just like that sucks that you're not able to do anything for your child except for marry them off to somebody who might treat them better. Yeah, she's like fingers crossed. (laughs) And this is like... I don't know. It's not like anything serious, but like one of my favorite things is that Gianna would like say phrases incorrectly. Like I thought it was hilarious. And like everyone would always correct her. I know. Like like, just just leave her alone. I liked her like getting phrases wrong. I do it on purpose sometimes too. Like to be funny. Like especially Christian, he'd like, what is what's wrong with you? Like that's not how you say it. And she's like, what? Like, you knew what she meant, though. Like, you don't need to be a dick. You knew what she meant. I also hate people that, like, um, correct people's grammar and stuff online. It's like, okay, but you knew what they meant. Yeah, it's like, it was close enough that you could understand what I'm saying. (laughs) Yeah. I guess unless that person who made the comment was saying something rude, then I feel like it's acceptable to bully them for their grammar. Yeah, yeah. No, if they're Um, being, like, a a dick, then it's, like, fully fine. But if it's, like, they're making, like, a heartfelt post or something, and they make a typo, it's, like, keep it to yourself. Yeah, then leave them alone because you knew what they meant. Um, So, yeah, only acceptable to correct people if they're being an asshole. Then this book did involve some some solid tropes that I think are – they're. Part of the reason why we were super into it. Um, So the grumpy sunshine trope, you know, we it's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, Forced proximity. Also, hell yes. Love that. Second chance. Not my favorite, but they did it really well um, in this book. It was very well done. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's why this book is so quality is like Danielle Laurie knew what she was doing. She didn't, like, frustrate you with these things because even, okay, so also there is a miscommunication trope and there is a pregnancy trope, which- But again, it's well done. Not our favorites, but I will, like, I'll fucking allow it because Danielle- It was the end of the book. It was the end of the book. And also in the third book, you'll see how 
freaking sweet. It changes their dynamic. Um, their Christian child is the best thing thoughtful. I've ever seen in my life. That child is exactly like her mother and it's perfection. But also and she is a psychopath like her father. Yeah, she's got basically all of the worst qualities from each of her parents in the best way possible. Danielle Laurie just knows what she's doing. She's amazing. Um, I So, okay, the thing with the second chance stuff... There are times, like, I think there has to be a certain set of, like, events that have to happen in order for it to be a good second chance book. So, I hate it when you have a book and, like, the second chance happens because of some crazy miscommunication and they just call things off and then it's 10 years later. Or they're, like, they cheated Mm -hmm. and then later on, like, realize their mistake and then the second chance thing happens. It's, like, I hate those types of second chance books, but I think this one was okay because first of all it was hilarious what happened yeah um and second of all like basically he just dipped out and like he knew he had to go and like it was like a mysterious thing that he did he just disappeared because he had to go back to russia to like help his brother out and Mm -hmm. it's like that's fine yeah like i don't mind that type of second chance because it's like nothing ever really happened anyway like he's like well she doesn't even know my name so i'll smell you later yeah and she was like Okay, I guess um, that hot guy is gone now. She was, like, probably a little bit bummed. She's like, we had a really fun game going, so that sucks, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, she's like, damn. That, that added a little bit of excitement to my life, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's, like, the only second chance book I will probably ever accept. All the others are not great. That's fair. And, like, with the miscommunication, like, it was such a one-sided miscommunication because Gianna is very good at communicating exactly what she needs and it's Christian who is having a very hard time giving that to her as well and so I liked this miscommunication I I don't even know if I'd label it as miscommunication because Gianna was like cool when you figure your shit out let me know so it was kind of more like her just expecting him to develop like yeah it was just kind of like it was her knowing like her an ultimatum. Worth and like what she wanted and yeah. like leaving the ball in his court to step up to it yeah I agree and then he did he was like yeah you're right he's like let I'm me tell you everything that happened yeah he was like I don't know this could be helpful to kind of say it out loud and it was <laughs> so yeah I had nothing but respect for Gianna in that aspect because she knew what she wanted and she was willing to compromise with him and he wasn't yeah this book does also feature the breeding kink which okay (laughs) also known as raw dogging so it's so funny because like neither of us like the pregnancy trope but we're both fans of the breeding kink in books so it's like and then i get mad when they get pregnant (laughs) so what does that say about us like like give yourself an IUD baby yeah honestly but that is funny to me that but I I did think that was great but also it's like you should definitely use protection like if you're on the pill because it's not effective and like I sometimes I don't like it like especially if like we're reading like a high school book or something I'm just like hate that like put a condom on but I don't know why when it's like two consenting older people I'm like hell yeah get it girl no I mean I agree like the circumstances have to be right for it to be enjoyable um but I loved it in this book because they're both like they're so toxic but Christian's like like, maybe she'll get pregnant and I was like ew but also (laughs) I know because the thing is like that's the culture that they're in. He's like, I want to own this woman. I, I want her to marry me. But like, Nico was like that, too. He's like, to I've never not used a condom. And then in his head, he's like, fuck, yeah, I'm going to get this girl pregnant for sure. Yeah, it is. Honestly, it's pretty fucked up. But <laughs> <laughs> when I liked it. I don't know what that says about me. I think it says <sighs> that we're normal because obviously she wrote it for a reason. She wrote that like, for me. <laughs> She wrote that for me and me she alone. She really said for you, Paige. <laughs> Love you, Danielle. But yeah, so with that, we'll kind of lead into some of our discussion questions. First question. Do you think that Nico knows that Christian is also involved with the Bratva? Or does he just think he's a dirty fed? I don't know. I've been thinking about this a lot. So 
obviously the women in this world are not like told everything but we didn't really get much about why christian confronted antonio to begin with Mm -hmm. and so i think nico might have to know because that's like kind of i don't know well you'll find out more about the the brapa in the next book that's kind of the main focus of it but i don't think christian has as much to do with the brapa as his brother does Mm -hmm. um i do think he kind of like helped him get started and like does some of the like middleman work for him over in the united states but i think he keeps that on the down low i don't think many people know that he's like associated with the brapa and that's why he's created like this whole persona of being like american being a dirty fed being like your good red white and blue type man no i agree Um, and so i really (laughs) feel like he's almost like a triple agent because the feds don't know he's working with the mafia the mafia know he's working with the feds but not the brapa but the brapa knows that he's doing everything right because he's literally, like, his brother is the brother. Right. <laughs> and so, I, d- I don't think Nico does. And I think that makes Christian probably one of the most powerful men in this book. Yeah. In this no, entire I world. I agree. And um, I definitely think that it doesn't even matter. If Nico did find out, it it really wouldn't matter that much. Because... Christian could just disappear. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, because, yeah, that's true. But also... I think Nico would re- recognize that that also is to his benefit to have that connection as well. Well, so and I he'd think, probably be pissed, but I think Nico would know in that moment that he is kind of like the smaller fish in the pond at that point. Yeah, he would be a little bit humbled and he would be pissed because it would humble him. But <laughs> I think ultimately he knows that Christian would be even more powerful and beneficial to be partners with. Well, because on top of that, too, Christian also has, like, his own, like, tracking stuff that he's developed on his own. And so mm-hmm. it's, like, he has his hands in so many different honey pots here. Yeah. Which makes him ten times hotter. On yeah, the- it's, like, what a <laughs> fucking smarty. Good for him. <laughs> I'm in love with him. I am. Ugh. So the next question, I guess, kind of ties into this, but we already talked about it. It was how lucrative do you think it would be to be a triple agent working with the FBI, Mafia, and Brapa? Very. 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 Uh, I mean, because what we just talked about, it makes him even more powerful. If Nico knew about it, it would make Nico realize, hey, I might need to be like a little more uh, cooperative with this man. (laughs) Well, also, if you remember in this book too, Sebastian was trying to get in on it because they kept talking Mm -hmm. about the Colombian. And so I think Sebastian probably has some of that figured out because because I think he's really smart smart too. Yes, he seems so smart. And I would be so freaking happy if the next book is about him. It is. Okay, thank God. Because he is... He's up there with Gianna for me, as far as, like, intriguing yeah. characters. He's um, so interesting. And, like, he just appears, kind of helps out, and then dips out. And so he's not only building, like, favors from people, but he's also, like, sneakily just trying to, like, get in on the ground level here and mm-hmm. then, like, build it up. Because he knows. He knows he's, he's the second the son. Game. That's why he, in the first book, when his brother died, he was like, ooh. My time to shine. Nice. I think Sebastian knows probably about Christian and like that's probably why they'll work together. That's my theory. I agree. Next question is kind of a like piggybacking off of one that we asked for the last um, book. But if you were forced to get married for a second time in the mafia, like Gianna was, would you be content with a second marriage like what she went with, with like the just basically an old dude that lets you do whatever? Yes, but only if he was exactly like that old dude. Because Mm. if some old creepy man was trying to get with me, probably not. Yeah, but if he was so old that he like couldn't hear or move very well, absolutely, that would be so clutch. And just like put you in your own apartment with a credit card, like yeah, yeah. See, I think her biggest mistake though was that he was so old that he died too fast. So I feel it's like tough because like if you go much younger, like I don't know, you run the risk of like 
having to provide the sugar for your sugar daddy. <laughs> I know. Like, I just want to, I just want to be risky a, gamble. a symbol for them. I just want to be a symbol of power. I don't want them to touch me. <laughs> My body is a temple. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think I'd be 100% fine with that. I would too, if it was exactly like her situation. I I do feel like she, like if she had decided though, that she was going to like sleep with other people because her husband was a capo. Mm -hmm. And so he was like pretty high up in the ranks. And so I feel like if she had fucked around and like slept with other people, like that probably would have ended poorly for her. You would either need to be really sneaky or just be celibate like her. (laughs) Um, yeah, which I think I would be perfectly fine being celibate, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> really? I don't, yeah. I don't think I could. I don't think I would need a partner um, mm. physically. I think I would be okay. That's fair. It would probably, it would suck to feel lonely. I think that would be yeah. more than anything. But she's used to being lonely anyway, which is sad. But like, it's not like it's anything. <laughs> yeah, no, she her. was absolutely thriving. Yeah. Last question is how did you feel Danielle Laurie did with the portrayal of mental illness in this book? So I think it's like something that we both can kind of like speak to different parts yeah. here because um, for me, like I do have panic disorder. And so with Gianna's panic attacks, um, I fully could relate to that. I think she did a great job of like explaining kind of what goes through your mind like whenever you are about to have a panic attack and you're used to them you know like your body has like these certain like yeah. things that it'll do and you kind of have to like collect yourself and be like okay I'm about to have a panic attack so I'm about to make a game plan for how I'm going to calm myself down and Gianna sometimes she struggled with that sometimes she needed a little help she needed Christian to be nearby which I can yeah I get that too um it helps me to calm down if I if I can like have someone with me um yeah I think it was pretty spot on (laughs) and like the um portrayal of like what it's like to talk to your therapist too I thought was pretty spot on as well because it is not always like a positive like it's not always like a fun (laughs) thing to do and I think Christian like you could definitely see his like frustration and he's like why are you asking me that and like why are you being nosy and that's really how it goes at therapy yeah and it's funny too because at the very beginning of the book when it kind of opens up with him in therapy um he tries to make a little joke to like make light of it and the therapist is like not that down (laughs) yeah she's like just writing it down in her notes and (laughs) doesn't like think it's funny but she basically probably writes down like uses humor as coping mechanism I do also think she was extremely intimidated by him (laughs) yeah well I'm sure she was probably scared of him a little bit but I could relate to that um that part where Christian was like trying to make a little bit of a joke and the therapist was like interesting (laughs) <laughs> and as far as like OCD goes, so I do have moderate OCD. Uh, mine's manageable, but OCD is a very interesting disorder because it presents itself so differently in each person. And so like sometimes you do have ticks like kind of what Christian does where you have to like repeat things like multiples of three or you have to like have things like a certain way or like establish like different routines because it like helps you stay sane basically his I feel like they kind of went with more of like a generic type of OCD where it's like he you know was a germ freak and like Mm -hmm. he did like to have things a certain way and I think that's what a lot of people think of when they think of OCD um and so I wish like she had maybe like presented it a little differently um because like with mine like it manifests in like a health anxiety Um, and I also have like physical tics sometimes. And so like, I don't know, I feel like she almost kind of like went the easy route on that, but I am glad that she like talked about it because it is like a very, very serious like disorder that I think a lot of people kind of make light of because it's like, oh, you're just like having things organized and that's not what it is. People think that if someone has more of a type A personality, like they'll be like, oh, I'm so OCD. Like it's like, no, you're just a a type A person. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like being organized does not equate with having OCD. Um, But like, it's just kind of become something that people don't really realize unless they're like educated on it. So 
I highly recommend that people kind of look into it and educate themselves on that disorder. But like Um, from the ticks aspect, like that was pretty accurate. Everyone does things differently. And so like having to like swipe over his watch three times or having Mm -hmm. to like do any of that, like that's a, that's a pretty common one, but it is very interesting to see how everyone ticks differently. Yeah. I do think, yeah, the germ thing was a little, maybe a little more like stereotype based, Mm -hmm. but it is a stereotype for a reason. Like that is, um, it's common, common. Yeah. Symptom of OCD that people have so that's you know it I'll, boils I'll down to more of like a control thing and like an impulse thing and so I feel like um he had a lot of like compulsions mm-hmm. um especially like when it came to Gianna um yeah. so that that was definitely pretty spot on yeah agreed so overall pretty pretty good portrayal yeah um which <laughs> I don't know if Danielle Laurie just did her research or if she also struggles with mental illness, but um, <laughs> thank you, Danielle Laurie. Either way, yeah, we loved great it. Book. But this wraps up the maddest obsession. Ten out of ten. Join us next week for a mini sober. Caitlin is going to be schooling me on the Bratva. Be sure to start also on the last book in the Maid series, which is called The Darkest Temptation, which features the Bratva. So uh, yeah, we'll see you guys then. And as always, let's get lit.